Hello, everyone, and welcome to Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. It's the home of the Coach Kelly Wells Show. For the next half hour, we'll talk U Pike basketball with your head coach, Kelly Wells of the University of Pikeville men's basketball team. And coach, welcome in. One and one on the week, twenty-one and six overall, six and five in the conference, fourth in the, the conference standings at this point. I know not to ask this question. You're never satisfied with the loss, but you're holding ground in the standings. We are. We we fell into a little slump. We had a little couple week stretch there where we just didn't play well, more so offensively than anything. I uh, had a great, great gritty effort on the road at Campbellsville to get a nice win coming back home. And we've been in an odd circumstance being on the road as much as we have. So we're thankful for this close of the season. Three home games in the conference that are critical games for us, uh, all at the Expo Center. We're very excited about the potential there. And certainly uh, we'll be asking for uh, fan support and people to come out, students alike, and uh, really have a great environment for these last three games. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, we'll talk about those tonight. Coming off last week, a win over Campbellsville, and you've got the Mid-South Conference Player of the Week. Once again, Darren Leslie, he had a career night. He really did. He scored our first 16 of our first 20 points uh, on the road. Uh, very tough night. Uh, he did everything from rebounding to bringing the ball up the court. Uh, got us off to a phenomenal start. Got tired towards the end. He had sure. a couple turnovers at the end that, that almost were critical turnovers to us. But he played so well. And uh, you could just see the confidence on our team just grow when he does his thing. And uh, all of our guys played well. We didn't have any dead spots in the lineup. Actually made four threes in the second half. Some big-time threes down the stretch. Uh, Jordan Perry hit a great one from the wing. Trey Rakes hit a great one from the top of the key that kind of secured the victory for us. So very thankful uh, that we found that basket a little bit better in the second half at Campbellsville. Indeed. And, uh, of course, that type of play contagious. When you get a guy that's playing like that, it seems to rub off on others. Uh, many teams this time of year, they'll, they'll experience dead legs. You've got cold and flu going on throughout the region, throughout our our high schools, our elementary schools, a lot of sickness going on, and that carries over to a locker room too. What's the health of the Bears like right now? Well, we've, we've got a couple injuries. Uh, Chase Parsley's out for a couple weeks. We're, we're, we're praying over a good result from his MRI and making sure that we check him out thoroughly. His arm's bothering him, his shoulder. Uh, he's out for a couple weeks for sure. Uh, Mike Lewis is dinged up a little bit with his knees, just got bad knees, so we're trying to get him through that as best we can. Uh, but as far as that, Trey Rakes has got a little hip pointer that he's getting over. So it's been good for us to be able to get our legs, so to speak, underneath of us this week. But we've had some good practices uh, heading into to tomorrow's game, and I, you know, we're as healthy as we're going to be. If we only play on the days we all feel good, there wouldn't be a whole lot of days we'd play. So we're thankful that we're as healthy as we are. It would be a short schedule indeed. You've got Cumberland University, uh, of course, tomorrow night at the East Kentucky Expo Center. The women at 6 and the guys at 8 home again on Saturday. How big of a difference is that? We've talked about the five-game road stretch and how tough that is. Number one, you're in the Mid-South Conference. It's a battle every game out. You're traveling, you're on the road, players are missing classes, and they get a little road weary. Any of us that have had to do any kind of traveling, it gets to us. It has to get to them too. Is it that big of a difference in college basketball? Yes. Uh, winning a college basketball game on the road is one of the toughest things a college athlete can do in any sport. It's just hard to do. That's why we're so thankful we're at home. Uh, but we also need to make our home court something that's an advantage to us. You know, it's, it can't be, you know, empty seats all around. We've got to have people in the stands. That's what makes it tough. Uh, the kids feed off of that. The coaches feed off of that. So we, we've got to really take advantage of the three-game stretch we have at home and, and make that a tough place for opponents to come in and play. We've we're 73 and 4, I believe, since 2015 at home. So we've taken care of, of home court, and we need to continue to do that. We're going to do something a little differently tonight on the Coach Kelly Wells Show. Guys in class, they're taking care of studies, but uh, we've got some uh, interesting trivia. We're going to talk about the Pikeville basketball program, uh, some things that go back to the earliest history of Pikeville basketball at the University of Pikeville, then Pikeville College. We'll do that, and we'll have some – Fans will have a chance to pick up some great stuff tonight as uh, we preview the upcoming games this weekend and, of course, next Saturday to close out the regular season at the Expo as well. You've got a special event tomorrow night. 
we do a lot packed into one game. You know, it's a pink out, cancer awareness from the women's side. Uh, we'll also be wearing our pink ties and, and, and supporting the same mission, same calls. It's also Walmart night, so we're going to have some great giveaways, honor them. It's also Mountain Laurel night, so a lot of things going on. And one of the things we, we cherish about that night is we get to honor our baseball and softball team who are – who are our pep section a lot of times and really give a great effort to us and try to kick their seasons off here just recently. The, the boys have already started. The women start next week, so we want to kick them off right. But it's going to be a busy night. Get there. Enjoy it. Uh, a lot of great things going on, a lot of door prizes, a lot of giveaways. Uh, but on top of that, you're going to see two great basketball games. Absolutely. And, of course, the Bears will take on Cumberland University, Tennessee, 8 p.m. tip-off for the men. The women tip at 6. Get there early. Make a night of it and support the Bears. We'll step out, take a break. We'll come back. We'll have some uh, Pikeville basketball trivia coming up. And, of course, we'll preview the upcoming matchups this weekend. And to close out the regular season, we'll talk about the national tournament and the Bears' latest national rankings when the Kelly Wells Show returns after this. Welcome back to Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. It's the home of the Kelly Wells Show, where we talk U-Pike basketball every week at this time. And the Bears, as high school teams closing out the regular season, heading toward the postseason, the Bears are as well. Two home games this weekend. Tomorrow night, Cumberland U. Saturday, a fierce battle expected with Lindsey Wilson. And then closing out the season next Saturday at the Expo Center. And always a great matchup is when the University of Cumberland's and UPike get together. So uh, three home games to close out the regular season. We'll talk more about those and the importance of those as well. Coach, uh, we talk family at the University of Pikeville. It's an important uh, part of this program to you. And uh, Bears basketball has been a family over the years. And I think tonight as we talk some U-Pike trivia, we'll take a look at some, even some of the earliest history of Pikeville College, U-Pike basketball, and how important that Bear family is because a lot of those guys still around the program. You can look up in the Expo Center any given home game and you'll see some of the Hall of Famers there. Yeah, no question. And, you know, one of the biggest things we try to preach to our guys is the legacy that they leave behind. And we've got some great examples here in our trivia of some people that have left some awesome legacies behind. Uh, and we want to kind of honor those people. And we want to be an honoring program. We want people to come back and be in a gathering situation. And most of ours do. We have a great turnout. Uh, we've got great tradition, and you know one of our big mottos is tradition never graduates, and it, it and it doesn't. And we want those people to come back. You know the Jimmy Kent Kerrs of the world still sit up in the bleachers, and yes. they've got their ideal seats, and they watch every single game we play. Jody Thompsons of the world are sitting behind our scores table, and those are the things that we want. We want people to continue to come back, support both the men's and the women's, but also our university as a whole. So we're we're thankful for the legacy that we're creating, and we're going to honor the legacy in the past. Absolutely, some uh, great. Uh, players have gone through the Pikeville, uh, both at Pikeville College and more recently the University of Pikeville as well. Uh, a lot of those guys, record holders, and uh, they, they've set individual records. They've set uh, records as teams, and uh, they've gone on to great things. And we're going to talk about those tonight and give some of the fans a chance to pick up some great stuff. You've got some prizes uh, that we're going to give away tonight as we, well. We did. It actually is gear from our team. It's travel gear. It's uh, coaches' shirts. It's T-shirts. There's car stickers. We've got a vest to give away, some really neat Nike stuff. We've got a great contract to Nike, so it gives us an opportunity to kind of share the wealth a little sure. bit, so to speak. And we'd love to be able to hand those out to some great fans tonight if they show up and come around and, and want go. to do that. We'll, uh, we'll throw out a couple of trivia questions, and we'll come back after the break talk about the answers to those questions and uh, if you're tuned in right now or if you happen to be here at buffalo wild wings know the answer uh, just come to us during the break we'll make sure you get your prize and uh, we'll get you a, a little pub for knowing the answers to some of these you challenged me before the show with some of these there are some tough questions when you have to remember some of those performances some of those individuals because our memories escape us as we get a little older but uh, there are some very recognizable names if you know Pikeville basketball you're going to know a lot of these people that we mentioned individually. No doubt. We'll, we'll throw out a couple. We'll do one easy one that I think most people will get, and we'll okay. do one that's very challenging. So right. we'll, we'll kind of kind of keep it at the break from there. Uh, the first one is, who is our school's all-time leading scorer? Don't be fooled by this. Who's our all-time leading scorer? Uh, and the other one is naming three of our six 2,000-point scores. Wow. We have six all-time. Those date from back to – 
the, the early 60s all yes. the way to recent times. So right. we have six 2,000-point scores. All you need to do is come up with three of those six and uh, our school's all-time leading scorer. Uh, that was done at Pikeville College yes. at the time. Yes. yes. And uh, it, it, as we talked about those six, going through the list of those names, it, it are, they're, they're names that are associated with Pikeville basketball. And uh, if you know the history of Pikeville basketball, you'll know those. Three of the six 2,000-point scorers in Pikeville basketball history and, of course, the all-time leading scorer at Pikeville College. And uh, I think that is an easy question. I think many will get that. Uh, also, who's the all-time winningest coach at Pikeville? Ladies and gentlemen, he's here every week. Kelly Wells, the all-time winningest coach at uh, Pikeville. And, uh, Coach, uh, you've been here a while now. You're the winningest coach at the University of Pikeville. And, uh, of course, over the history of Pikeville College as well. What are these players? When you look up and you see Jimmy Kent Kerr, Jody Thompson, when you see your guys return, uh, Elisha, Ryan Whitaker, you see Todd Mays, and you see Bart Williams, and you see these type of players that have gone on and had great careers, and you see them still supporting the program. What does it mean to you individually? Well, it, it, it means a lot. It means, one, that we're, we're doing things the right way, that people want to come around still. They want to be a part of it. Uh, it shows that their experiences when they were there as a student athlete have been wonderful because they want to continue that trend over. And there's really – there's not a, a school that we don't go to that has some kind of connection with Pikeville College, even if it's an administrator. It could be a former player. Uh, but the legacy has continued to roll on. So we have uh, – it's very pleasing to me to see people keep coming around because it means we're doing things the right way, and it also means they enjoyed their experience. We want to keep them around. Indeed. It's a program you can be proud of, the University of Pikeville men's basketball team. And uh, if you know the answers to those trivia questions, uh, you can win some great stuff tonight with the Kelly Wells Show. It's presented by Appalachian Wireless, live from Buffalo Wild Wings. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Buffalo Wild Wings at Pikeville. It's the home of the Kelly Wells Show where we talk U-Pike men's basketball every week at this time. And the Bears closing out the regular season. Tomorrow night, Cumberland University is at the Expo Center. The women tip at 6, the men at 8. Saturday, Lindsey Wilson at the Expo tips at 2 and the men at 4. And then next Saturday, the Bears will welcome the University of Cumberland's to close out the regular season, then on to the Mid-South Conference Tournament in Frankfurt. Coach, we talked about the five-game road trip, how tough it was. You've got a three-game home stretch. You sit fourth in the conference. You've got matchups coming up against one team that's ahead of you in the conference standings, one team that directly trails you. How important is this three-game stretch? Well, we're going to take them one by one. We call them one-game championships. Each one of them are critical to our success. You know, we don't want to be uh, heading into the, the conference tournament on a losing note. That's certainly not the plan. Uh, to have the advantage of being at home, we need to capitalize on that. We managed to get through that long road stretch uh, to get to this part of it. So we should be enjoying this, should be ready to roll. And, you know, it starts with Cumberland, Tennessee on Thursday. We can't look ahead. We can't look behind. We've got to look at that game as the most critical game of the season. Uh, and then once we take care of that business, then we'll look towards Saturday. So they are very important to us. Uh, Lindsey Wilson's a game behind us. They go to Cumberland's. They come to us. They go to Georgetown. So they've got a tough stretch to sure. go as well. So we need to make sure we take care of our home court uh, and we never really worry about what anybody else is going to do. You know, opportunities are going to multiply as we take we seize those opportunities. So each night that we win, that puts us in a better position. Uh, we're, we're ranked 14th nationally, tied with Benedictine, and we like where we're sitting. But if we can get, continue to win out, I think we can get up a little bit higher uh, and possibly even get four, maybe five teams from our league into the national tournament, which we've got a great league, and we really deserve five teams. I'm, I wish we had more teams in our in our league to get that, that double bid. We just don't have those two automatics, and it hurts us a little bit. But we deserve five teams in the national tournament. That was the next question. Uh, we deserve five teams. How many do you think make it? Yeah, you know, you right think now I think, I, I think we're square on four. Uh, I really think it just depends how all these last games go. You know, life's going to end up winning our conference, and they're at a 15-10 and 10 record right now. I think yeah. they'll finish the season either at 18-11 and 11 or 19-10. and 10. Uh, So they'll have an opportunity to get in there. We need our conference champion regular season to be in the national tournament, uh, even if they don't win the regular or the conference championship in the tournament side. So hopefully they'll be the fourth team that gets in there, depending on how everything plays out. We've got to take care of business so uh, we can put ourselves in a position to – 
to continue to stay in that middle of that 14 range, and uh, I like our chances to do that, but we've got to take care of business each night. You've got life uh, that you expect to be there, maybe not, but if they take care of business, they should be there. Georgetown currently sixth in the country, Cumberland's ninth, and the Bears sit 14th. You've got Lindsey Wilson sitting just behind. They re- are receiving votes in the poll. If we don't get five, if we only get four, you defeat Lindsey, but they take care of business. Do they sneak in as that 15? Well, I hope so. I, I hope they don't beat us, but I, ho- I hope sure. they certainly win uh, enough games to get in. We root for all our opponents except for the night we play them. So we want we want as many teams to get in. They're sitting in that receiving votes rank now, but like there would have to be no upsets going all the way through there to stay in the lower part of that receiving right. vote. So they need to get up into that 20 – uh, 25 to 28 range to get themselves securely in there because you know there are going to be upsets. There are going to be teams that win their conference tournament that maybe not been uh, in that higher ranking. So they need to uh, they need to do some work still. Uh, but we're going to certainly keep fighting to try to get five teams in. That's not been done in my time. We've been lucky to have four. Uh, the women's side has gotten five, and hopefully we'll get that same kind of respect. Indeed, uh, as we should. The Mid South Conference loaded, and uh, certainly the uh, competition is. Uh, worthy of those national tournament selections this year. Uh, Coach Kelly Wells, you're showing appreciation to the fans tonight. We've got a little U-Pike, Pikeville College basketball trivia tonight, and we had a a couple of questions last break. Let's go ahead and leave those out there, and then let's leave this this segment with a couple of more questions. And if you know the answers, you're in here at Buffalo Wild Wings or out traveling around, come by. Give us the answer, and uh, Coach has got some great prizes. But let's throw a couple more questions out. We're, we're going to sneak one from the from the far past and one from the near future here. Okay. Uh, who is Pikeville's very first All-American? And that was in 1955. It's a challenge. 1955. Question. But I think the name's very popular that people will will have a chance to get. The other yeah. one is, is kind of recent. Name the only NAI National Player of the Year in Pikeville history. Now, that's the National Player of the Year, not Tournament Player of the no. Year. We have one of those. Too, also but, recent. Yep, this is the national player of the year for the all of the NAI of all the teams. Yeah, two great questions, two great names for Indeed. you. Indeed, it's the Kelly Wells Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. We are live at Buffalo Wild Wings. We'll step out, take a break. If you know the trivia answers, come by and say hey. Uh, let the coach know your guess, and you can pick up some great stuff. Appreciating the fans tonight from Buffalo Wild Wings. When we come back, we'll have a preview of Cumberland U tomorrow night at the Expo, and uh, we'll wrap up this edition of the Kelly Wells Show when we come back right after this. Welcome back to Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. It's home of the Kelly Wells Show where we talk U-Pike basketball at this time every week. It's presented by Appalachian Wireless and Coach Kelly Wells in the house tonight as we preview the Bears' next three home games. Tomorrow night, most uh, most recently, uh, the Bears will take on Cumberland University out of Tennessee. And, uh, Coach, quick scouting report, last time out, uh, you beat them soundly. How do you keep your team focused? Well, we, we know what's at stake, you know, and, it, and they're the typical team that – uh, is very, very talented. They are good at every spot. They're very fast, very athletic, and it's important for us to have a, a premium on our effort, our 50-50 balls. We've got to get all the hustle plays, uh, and, and it's going to take a great effort. You know, Just because we won a third place earlier in the season doesn't guarantee us anything. Uh, anybody down the stretch has opportunities to win, and they're playing good basketball. They're the only team that's went to life and won, uh, so they're very capable of winning, sure. so we've got to come out and play uh, extremely hard. Uh, their guard play is their key. They try to get in the paint. We've got to do a great job of securing curing the paint, contesting, challenging, and rebounding. And, man, I tell you, it would be nice to see that ball go through the hole quite a bit. Yeah, indeed. It's been a struggle at times this year, as we've talked about. Offensively, not necessarily bad shots, just the ball just won't go in the hole uh, the way that we're used to seeing it go in the hole. Are you pleased with the way your team's progressed during the course of this season? Because you've gone through those times when the ball wouldn't go in, when you've had offensive slumps, nights when the defense had letdowns at moments. Are you pleased with where this team is heading toward that final week? Well, our, our goal is to play our very best at the end of the season. Right. So we're, we're sneaking up on that. We, we've, the defense and the rebounding, I really don't have a lot of complaints. They've done a tremendous job. You know, our turnovers have continually gotten better. Yeah. Uh, we got to continue to grow in that area. But offensively, we need to really start getting that on the high side. You know, we're – 
we're, we're statistically doing great nationally, rebounding. Sure. We're doing statistically great defensively. But this team offensively just is challenged a little bit, and it would be great for us to knock some shots down. We're not a bad shooting team. Uh, we've shown it, and actually this week in practice has been one of the better weeks we've had seeing that ball go through the basket. So I'm hoping that we're going to break that door down uh, starting tomorrow, and we'll finish strong in these last three home games. Nothing better than shooting your home building, so yeah. we're certainly thrilled about that. And then just carry that right over to tournament time and just continue to play our best. Absolutely. And uh, uh, maybe one of those guys that could uh, talk to the Bears about how to get the ball in the hole, the all-time leading scorer at the University of Pikeville. Of course, that was one of our trivia questions from early, and let's go ahead and let folks know the all-time leading scorer in Pikeville history is uh, Mr. Bart Williams, and that total is 2,736. 27. 36. And it's the, a huge number. And the second plate person, which I can't tell you because it would fill in another gap, yeah. was our second leading score very close to him, and he did that in two seasons of yes. competition. Yes. It's pretty incredible. And, uh, of course, we had another question out there. The very first All-American in Pikeville history, all the way back in the mid-50s. And it's a name that uh, is very recognizable. Uh, but a lot of people, they, they leave him out in the history and – Want to jump a little further ahead, but you remember the first All-American. That's that's Mr. Grady Wallace, yeah. and uh, we've had several All-Americans, but none more important than Grady and his crew that came through and gave us opportunities to do what we're doing. So we wanted to make sure we got him uh, in the trivia, but we're proud of Grady. 1955, our very yes. first All-American. Went on to be an All-American at South Carolina and uh, the only bear to uh, travel that highway, but uh, Grady Wallace, who passed away in 2006, and uh, Grady Wallace, the first All-American in Pikeville history. And uh, another one of our trivia questions we went to the break with. Name three of the six 2,000-point scores. So yes. we've, we've told you one. Yes. Bart Williams, time. 2,736. Right. That person in two years was Todd May. 2,225, two seasons of competition, That's crazy numbers. Points. Brian Johnson, we had mentioned a little bit earlier, is our third at 2,188. Donis Butcher at 2,080. Jody Thompson, which we're praying for you, Jody, 2,061 points. Yes. And John Lee Butcher was the sixth with 2,010. Incredible, incredible numbers from those six individuals and uh, just a part of the tremendous history of Pikeville College and University of Pikeville Bears basketball. Coach, we're out of time for tonight. We want to invite people to join us at the Expo tomorrow night. Cumberland, you in the house, 6 o'clock for the women. Your tip-off at 8. Yes, please be there. We need your support. We've got some great events happening. It'll be worth your while. Bring your family. Bring your friends. Love to see you at the game. Best of luck. Go Bears. It's the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. We've been live from Buffalo Wild Winds. Thanks for tuning in.